Okay, right, so, so can you see the slides now? Yes, ma'am. Ma uh, can you see me? Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Loud and clear. I'm good. I'm good. So, again, so we'll just continue uh, with this discussion on experimental design. So, we, so far, we learned about those um, terms. That's very important terms, no? So, for us to at least uh, uh, yung confidence natin sa experiment, uh, in doing the experiment, okay, is matas. Okay, now, the design structures that I uh, I was talking about, okay, uh, that will be discussed this uh, for this webinar are only this uh, CRD, RCBD, and the LSD. So, we'll start with the CRD. So, what is CRD? Okay, so if you can recall, na mentioned ko na yung CRD na initials kanina. So this is just a completely randomized design. So this is the most basic experimental design. Okay, all experimental units are considered the same, and no grouping among them exists. So there's no grouping. Okay, and then the treatments are allocated randomly to the whole set of experimental units. So that's the EUs, and each experimental unit has the same chance of receiving any of the treatments. So as you can. Imagine, ito lang po yun. Ito yung picture na to. So, we have this, for example, different uh, plants, okay? And then we have this um, treatment levels, blue, orange, and green. So, we apply the blue, okay, treatment, okay? Or the blue fertilizer, for example. So, to this plant. So, na random lang. So, we just randomly assign treatments. So, and then also for the orange, okay, uh, fertilizer, Okay, we can randomly apply this to the same okay, experimental area. So we have this plant here receiving orange treatment and then another plant receiving the orange treatment. And also for the green. Okay, so this green uh, plants actually receiving the green fertilizer. Okay, so just a picture of this CRD. Now, take note that, okay, they are used when experimental units are homogeneous. Okay, meaning the same the same variety, the same age. Okay, so depending on the research or experiment. Okay, and there is an effective local control. Okay, so how to have this effective local control? Okay, so how to minimize experimental error so that we have this effective local control? So usually, this CRD is usually done inside a laboratory or greenhouse. Okay, kaya... Yun yun, effective local control kapag inside the laboratory. It's because we um, there is the same temperature or same setup like that. And then we have this requirement. So take note of this requirement, three treatment levels to compare. So take note, we have three or more levels that you want to compare. And then we have this N, experimental units must be homogeneous. Again, homogeneous. And then N must be greater than or equal to the two, two times the number of treatment levels. So if you have three treatment levels, so two times three, you have how many? At least six, okay, six of uh, experimental units, okay? And then take note also we have this RI or replicates are assigned to each level of T. So for each level, there should be a value of R. So for level one, you have R1. For level two, you have R2 and so on. So now this replicates, okay, can be, can have, okay, can have the same number. Okay, we have R1 equal to R2 or equal to RT. Okay, so we can now have a balanced design. Now for an unbalance, so yun nga, we cannot sometimes afford to come up uh, to have more replicates for a certain level kasi mahal siya. So we also have this unbalanced design or experiment. Now, since we are dealing with randomized experiment, so we need to have this randomization. So how do we... Uh, generate or how do we conduct randomization? So, first, okay, we have the steps assign the first R1 to T1, next R2 to T2, and the last R3 to T3. Okay, now, second, obtain a sequence of random numbers. So, you can use your calculator or Excel, okay, or you don't need a software for this, no? Pwedeng mano mano. Third step is to rank the random numbers. Okay, so as you can see here in the illustration, having three, uh, three levels, T1, T2, T3, <clears throat> and take note that T1, okay, is assigned to how many replicates? Two. So we have T1, T1 here, and then T2 is assigned to three replicates, so we have three. Okay, 
That's why we have T2, T2, T2. And then for T3, we have four applicates. So we have 43s. Okay. Now we generate random number. Okay. So we have this. So it can be any numbers no? from zero to one. And then this uh, next is we get the rank. Okay. The rank. Okay. So the lowest generated random number. Okay. This one here has rank one. And then the second to the last lowest, which is 0.218, has rank two. Okay. So these are the ranks now. And then we can have the layout. Okay. So as you can see, T3 is assigned to this one here. And then T1. Can you follow? T, for this two, we have T1. And then for this three, we have T3 again. Then four, we have T2. Okay. So this is now your layout. Please stay back. And now next, yes, we expect to have this data presentation. So since we are dealing with three, uh, two replicates under treatment one, then we have two observations. Okay, because we have two replicates. So from each replicate, there is one observation. Okay, so for treatment two, ganon then we expect to have. We use three replicates, then we expect to have three observations. So this is the data presentation. Then we also have this replicates, the number of replicates, and then the total, and then the mean. So basic data presentation lang po. And then take note also that once we have the responses, we can model the responses. So we have this means model, and we also have this fixed effects model. So for the means model, we have this yij equal to mu i plus epsilon ij. So... Um, this yij is your observed value, yung nakuha mong response, and then the mu i is the mean of the i treatment level, okay, the mean for that group, for that treatment level, and then the epsilon ij is the random error, okay. So we can also, okay, have this effects model, okay, for the responses. So instead of having just mu i plus uh, mu i plus epsilon, we have this mu plus tau i. So, this mu plus tau i is just equal to mu i. So, meron po dito sa side. Sa upper uh, right, meron tayong way, no? To come up with this, um, okay, to relate this model to the previous model. Okay, so, in the previous model, may mu i. So, this mu i is just your mu plus tau i. And then, tau i now is your mu i minus mu. This is used, okay, this model is used when you want to estimate for the treatment effect. So the tau i's, that's it. And then the mu i j, again, your response or the observed value, the mu is the overall mean, the tau i is the effect of the i treatment level, and then the epsilon is the random error. So that's it. Okay, this is very, these models are very important in stating for the mean and later on, then sa conclusion. 